Why did the chicken cross the road? Because it doesn't recognize the road's existence and the chicken's movements are mostly random and instinctive. Hey everybody, we've got John back this week with another video to help you live a more sustainable life. Hello, and welcome to Home and Garden for Mere Mortals. My name's John, and if you like what you see here, come check out my channel, Nailed It. Today we're gonna to be talking about raising chickens and quail and other exciting topics. Oh no, this isn't gonna be full of egg puns, is it? Yes, it is, Other John. Yes, it is. First up is housing. Now, chicken and quail are pretty different here, so you're gonna wanna pay attention. For chickens, you're going to need two to four square feet of space per hen. For a quail, you're gonna need one square foot to 15 square inches per quail. Now, I like to give them more room than that because I like to make sure that my quail get plenty of exercise. Now chickens are also different than quail in terms of what they need for their coop. Chickens need a place to roost and quail don't. Now a roost for a chicken should be eight to 10 inches across per hen so that they have a place to sit and roost. Now this should be higher than the actual nesting box. Now chicken and quail both need a place to nest but it's very different for each one. Chickens prefer nesting boxes and generally a good rule of thumb is you want one to two hens per nesting box. Although, in reality, I've seen that most of the chickens try to squeeze into one box all at the same time. Quail don't need a nesting box at all. In fact, what they prefer is something like small plants or little things that they can hide underneath. And they really don't like high places or high nesting boxes. I made this mistake with my quail and built a veritable castle. I found out later that they really don't care for nesting boxes and really they just prefer plants closer to the ground that they can kind of hide underneath and weave in and out of. I'll show you a couple pictures of the first coop that I built here. You can kind of see that it's really meant more for chickens because there's nesting boxes and high places to roost than for quail. So then I came back and made this quail coop here. It's actually on the ground. There's really only one nesting box, so to speak, and it's really low to the ground, so they can kind of tuck underneath it if they want to instead of going inside. And there's a lot of plants for them to kind of run around it. Now, if you live in a cold climate, you're gonna wanna make sure that your chickens inside of their coop have some kind of a heating lamp. Same thing for quail. They really don't like the cold, and in fact, they'll stop laying in colder climates. Now, along the same lines as housing, you're gonna to wanna to make sure before you get any chickens or any quail that you have some kind of quarantine. This can be a wire cage like I made here. This could be like a small dog kennel or it could be a small rabbit hutch. But you're gonna want something to be able to quarantine one of your birds if it gets sick. Now we'll talk about this more in detail when we get to the disease and medication section. So how many is too many? That's a really fun question. A lot of people go overboard the first time they get their chickens or quail. They tend to forget that these chickens will lay eggs daily, which means if you get three chickens, that's three eggs a day, which means you'll have 21 eggs a week. And that's more eggs than most people know what to do with. I guess if you live next to a freeway, you could always tell those eggs to take the egg sit. I don't think I can tell another egg joke. I can't quite make them funny enough. I think the joke should be left to comedy hens. Now for quail, three quail will also produce 21 eggs, but it's a bit different. It takes four to five quail eggs to make one chicken egg, which means if you have three quail, that's about equivalent to four eggs a week, four chicken eggs a week. So raising quail, you can have sort of a bigger flock and get a fewer amount of eggs than if you had the same amount of chickens. Now you don't need a rooster if you're raising chicken or quail. I started out with a rooster because I actually found the little guy hiding underneath the rose bush after he got attacked by another animal. After nursing him back to health, you know how he repaid me? By screaming his little lungs out every morning at 5 a.m. My neighbors really didn't like it, I really didn't like it, so I wound up giving him away to the Pacific Wildlife Foundation. And I'll play a short clip for you here. Now I've turned this down a little bit because it is kind of loud. So if you plan on getting a roux, just remember that they're gonna make a lot of noise. All right, let's talk about feed. Now, in all my research, when I first got my little bird, I found that chickens and quail are very similar in this arena. In short, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they have enough protein and calcium in their diet so that they don't become malnourished while laying eggs every day. I found that most people feed their chickens laying pellets. Laying pellets give their chickens enough essential nutrients that they don't become malnourished while laying eggs. 
Now laying pellets have different names like laying pellet, laying feed, or just crumble. And crumble is actually just a smaller version of those laying pellets. So if you have quail, crumble's a really good solution for you. In my case, I use wild backyard bird seed and I supplement that with oyster shell to make sure that they get enough calcium that they need. And I also use dried mealworms to make sure that they get enough protein. Now for the mealworms, I just use approximately one to 10 ratio of the mealworms to the bird seed. And that works out pretty well. If you're looking to buy chicken feed, you can buy it at any farm supply store. Or in my case, there's not a lot of those around in Orange County. So I found a store called Tractor Supply and they had all kinds of chicken feed as well as some of the medicines that we're gonna talk about later in the disease prevention section. And if you're interested, I also found some of this stuff called Missing Link. It's supposed to give your chickens more omega-3s and some of that healthy stuff so that the eggs that they produce also carry those omega-3s when you eat those eggs. All right, disease, predators, and prevention. Now, I'm only gonna talk about the most common items that I've seen, and I'm certainly not a vet, so if you have more information about certain types of diseases or ways to treat those diseases, please let us know in the comments below. I think together we can really help a lot of people. Now, coccidiosis is a parasitic disease that attacks the intestinal tract of birds. Chickens and quail actually gain an immunity to this as they grow older, which means that chicks are the most likely to be affected. Coccidiosis will kill your birds within only several days, and it can wipe out an entire flock if it's left untreated, so it's very serious. So number one, how do we prevent it? The best way to prevent coccidiosis is to have a dry and clean living environment for your birds. So if there's a lot of waste or a lot of moisture, you wanna make sure that it's dry and clean of all of those things. Number two, how do you identify coccidiosis? You can tell if a bird has coccidiosis because it'll stand in the corner of the coop with its feathers fluffed up, it'll be losing a lot of weight, it won't wanna move, and it won't wanna eat. It becomes very lethargic and doesn't really do anything anymore. Women, imagine your husband when he gets the flu. He's wrapped up in bed, he doesn't wanna move, he looks sickly, and he just sits there without doing anything. As the disease progresses, you might find things like blood or mucus in the stool as well. If you find that your bird has coccidiosis, you're going to want to quarantine the bird right away. That's why in the housing section, I told you that a quarantine is something you're gonna need before you get any birds. Now you'll wanna use this medicine, it's called Corid. I found this at that tractor supply that I talked about earlier. It was really hard for me to figure out what the correct dosage was for quail. So I've included the quail dosage and the chicken dosage in the description below. So if you had trouble finding it as well, you can come here, look in the description, and be able to treat your birds, hopefully before the disease spreads. Now the second disease that I've seen in my own flock of quail is something called eye worm. Yeah, it's gross. Um, and it's exactly what it sounds like, eye worm. It's a parasite that takes residence in its host's eye. Now I'm not gonna get too graphic and I'm not gonna show pictures or anything like that. Now if you have chickens or you have quail, it's really important that you're able to identify eye worm so that you know when to treat it. To identify eye worm, your chicken or quail is gonna have something that looks like a puffed up eye and sometimes it might be accompanied with a little bit of mucus out of the eye or the nose. And it's a dangerous disease for your bird to have. In fact, it can cause some serious damage in the long run. So in order to treat that, you're gonna to need to medicate your bird. And again, I would recommend quarantine during the medication process. The best thing I could find to treat eye worm is something called Vet RX. And it's a little difficult to apply, and it generally takes two people, unless you're way more skilled than I am, to be able to apply Vet RX to get rid of eye worm. So to administer this medication, the first person is going to take the chicken or the quail and turn it upside down and open the beak of the chicken or quail. The second person is going to take a Q-tip. They're going to apply the Vet RX to the Q-tip and in the cleft of the top part of the beak, they're going to apply that Vet RX. So it's the cleft of the top part of the beak that they're gonna apply that. You're gonna need to do that probably two times a day, maybe three if you wanna do that. After a couple days of applying that, it'll actually kill that eye worm and it'll come out. Now I'm not gonna to get too graphic, but that's how you apply the medication and generally how long it takes for that to resolve the disease. Lastly, I wanna talk about predators. Now, if you know me personally, you'll know that rats have been the biggest problem for me raising backyard birds. While pet rats might be friendly and cute, 
Wild rats can completely devastate your flock if they're able to get in. I've had rats chew through the fasteners on my coop, get in, and kill some of my birds. It was a horrifying sight. So this is one of the predators, and a really common predator, that may prey on small birds like quail, and in some cases chickens as well. Now obviously taking precautions is probably the best way to go. Things like traps and poison to prevent rats from attacking your birds. Secondly, you'll want to make sure that your coop or cage is secured so that they can't get in in the first place. You're going to want to make sure that you use metal fasteners or metal clasps to make sure that rats can't chew through or get into the coop or cage in any way. If you have a cage like mine that rests directly on the ground, you're going to want to make sure that you have a skirt that comes off the bottom so that rats or other predators can't dig underneath and get to the inside of the coop or the cage. Lastly, if your cage is raised up off the ground, you're going to want to make sure that there's some kind of barrier between the floor of your cage and where the rats can get to. Because it's possible that the rats can climb up and actually eat the feet of your birds if it's a wire floor. So if you've got that wire floor and it's raised up off the ground, make sure there's a barrier so that rats can't actually get to the bottom of the feet of your chicken or of your quail. If you like this video, please subscribe to Home and Garden for Mere Mortals. Also come check out my channel, Nailed It. My next video is actually going to be a shop tour of my shop, which is remarkably unique and I think a lot of people would enjoy seeing that. Also my next project video is going to be a wireless Bluetooth speaker, so if that sounds interesting, come check out my home channel and subscribe. You'll be first in line to get those videos. I hope this video was exactly what you expected. Thanks for watching.